Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And as you can see, we had to go visit Chase Chrisley in my mind okay we had to go have a sit down and see what's getting on his nerves and what he feel people should be saying and doing getting out of his family's business and he says he don't owe nothing to nobody far as expressing his feelings about his parents going to jail i said okay okay Chase, um what you want to tell the people what you want to tell the people honey because right now Everybody want your parents to go to jail. Probably you too, because you were in some uh, little infractions that was going to cost you sixteen thousand dollars. But we're not going to go into you because we came here to talk about why the people feel you should be saying something about your parents and their jail sentence. And um, we get it from People Magazine, of course. And I'm sitting here telling him what they don't wrote up on him. And for him to tell us a little bit more in his own words. Okay. Now, people wrote on you, Chase, that you uh, need to address your parents' sentencing. And you having a sit down with People Magazine, uh, giving them the true tea. Now, personally, I feel you did it as a publicity stunt because you didn't necessarily have to go to people. You could have went on your sister's podcast, Savannah. You remember she got a podcast? And you could have spoke your mind, but you didn't want to. You, you wanted to go a little higher. And I'm guessing you wanted to get paid for it. And doing it on your sister's platform, you weren't going to get paid. Okay, well, this is one of those things I understand. Sometimes people take money over a truth, and, and that's just what it is. And the truth get watered down to whether you don't know what's real and what's not real. But anyway, uh, it was said, Chase, that you were speaking about your parents in a prison sentence for the first time. Um, and your, your sister Savannah was saying that you never really had spoken up on how you felt about your parents going to jail until now. Now, you kind of got a little rude when you were telling people that it wasn't none of their business, okay? Because this is what they say you quoted. Um, let me see. You said, I think that I don't owe anybody an explanation. And I'm like, uh, you shouldn't have said that. That's bad PR. You need to find your person or you need to get a PR person if you don't have one. Because if you felt you didn't need to explain it, why are you explaining it on people's platform, people magazine platform, sir? Mm -hmm. See, that's where you went wrong. Call me next time. Call me next time, Chase, before you do anything. Because that was a big no-no. Okay, then you go on to say you don't owe the public an explanation. You go on to say how you feel. Uh, how I feel to anybody or what I feel about the situation doesn't concern people that are not in my family, pretty much. Because this is what you said now. I don't owe the public an explanation. And we are the public, okay? Well, I'm your friend, but, you know, the public is behind me, okay? You said, I don't owe the public an explanation. I don't need to explain how I feel to anybody other than the people that I care about and that I love. That's what you said now. Obviously, you're saying what we have been going through is hell. It is terrible, terrible situation. But I have to try and find the good even in the darkest times. I'm like, well, really, Chase, y'all, y'all were kind of living a good life, baby. Uh, and your parents was trying to keep you in a lap of luxury that you always were exposed to. So again, that was another blunder. You shouldn't, because it's sounding like you got defensive about a situation. You know, you trying to defend yourself when it was not necessarily your fault. It was your parents' fault because they got too greedy. They got too greedy with the money and being exposed to the public and 
them being seen on television trying to make themselves celebrities. So, you know, it depends on how you go about the celebrity ship. It, it, it will either be your downfall or it be your uh, your uh, chariot that you can go on and, and be praised on if you want to be praised, all right? But uh, going back to the article... You went on and said, I feel like throughout everything that we have been going through, it has made the appreciate it has made me appreciate things uh I did not appreciate as much in the past. It made me it made me do a lot of reflecting and just kind of figuring out who I am now as a man and who I want to be in ten years. And in ten years where that there and ten years from there. I'm like, uh, Chase and that statement right there. You acting like you were applying for a job, child. Only organizations and and, and businesses ask those crazy questions. You know, most of the time that we're living in now, if somebody were to ask you, what do you see yourself in five years? I would proudly say alive because how this COVID is acting up out here. That's the best I can give you. And hopefully I have my uh, faculties, meaning my brains intact. Because right now, it, it, it's just making a sister go. Just making, it's, it's, it's changing a sister's outlook and everything on how uh, people are being perceived out here and how they are definitely throwing caution to the wind and don't want to mask up. And that's why we're in the situations we are in at this point. So, yes, that 10 year stretch or five year stretch, you hopefully will see yourself alive. That would have been a human thing to say. Okay, other than saying, uh, I just want more riches and riches and riches. Okay, so um, then it, they quoted you by saying, uh, you're not going to worry about what everybody else in all the world is thinking and saying about you. You went on to say, I have to make sure that I'm good so I can be good for my fiance, Emily Meathers. I have to make sure Emmy's good, he continued. I have to make sure my family is good emotionally and that I am in a place emotionally where I can be there for my loved ones. In other words, you were basically saying you're going to abandon your mother and your dad. <laughs> Here's what I got from it. You're going to censor yourself. You're going to separate yourself from their mess and try to deal with it behind closed doors. In a sense, that's an admirable way to feel about a certain situation. But you benefited from their misdeeds, uh, their fraudulent activities, Chase. You can't wash your hands totally. You knew what was going on. You knew what was going on. So, again, you stepped in the doo-doo and you just sat down in it. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, wasn't a good answer. Was not a good answer to put out there in the social media world, okay? Uh, where most people are being tried and and, and uh, found guilty in prior to any of the laws getting involved. Um, then you go on to say uh, you haven't had really said anything on Instagram or anything like that because you felt like You've been doing the work behind the scenes, okay? You also added that that's going to pay off, and I just want my actions to speak for what needs to be said, okay? And you know your mother, 53 and 46, they res- they received their respective prison sentences for fraud and tax evasion. Uh, in November, a federal judge had sentenced your dad to 12 years in prison with 16 months probation, while your mom was given seven years in prison with 16 months of probation. Now, my thing about this, if you're going to get probation already out the gate before these people even serve one day in jail, that's a travesty as it is, okay? Most layman people, meaning everyday folks who go out there in the world and make it do what it do, they get more time. And I'm talking about the um, the melanated people, the brown people. They get a little bit more time uh, served than probation is put out on them, okay? So, you know, you have to take that in consideration. Right now, I feel that, you know, they're they going to get less of time. It's going to be like a Martha Stewart type thing. Uh, she's going to be living in some plush white-collar crime jail cell and not really exposed to 
real hard everyday criminals that are out there murdering, raping, stealing, shooting, killing, and all of that, which I think if a lot more people went that direction, that we didn't have a white collar place where you would go and like you entering in a country club type setting, they wouldn't be doing all of this stuff, okay? They wouldn't be doing all of this fraudulent shit, okay? But then we go back, uh, we go on back to where it says, um, you shared a cryptic message on Instagram about how loved ones, you know, uh, they can be expectedly taken away from you in a drop of a hat, uh, a blink of an eye, and you need to love on your people. And I'm like, yeah, you, you love on your mom and dad, and you love actually what they gave you as well. But my thoughts to you, uh, Chase, is don't come. Don't come when they inviting you to um, get on your social media platform and you're not ready for the kickback because you know it's always going to be some kickback. Someone somewhere is not going to like what you said or they're going to try to spin it to show another narrative or where they feel should be shown and that you were wrong in. Hire a PR person. Don't talk for yourself no more. Call me, okay? Call me and I can hook up a deal where either I'll do it pro bono or you're going to give me some. You know, gonna give me some. I don't know what that song would be, but monetary, it, it will please me more. All right, take care. Bye bye.